Well, hey, welcome everybody to Control Alt Achieve Live for April 10th, 2023. Thank you so much for being with me either live during the session or watching the recording later, whichever way. I appreciate you learning with me. As always, you can get to the resources for this evening at bit.ly slash CAA dash live. That'll get you to a uh, resource document. If you scroll on down to the second page of that document, you will see all the links we're going to be exploring tonight, as well as all the links from previous weeks as well. Well, I'll give you just a moment to take some time and get that pulled up while you're doing so. Real quick introduction. Howdy, everybody. My name is Eric Kurtz. I'm a educational technology coach up in Northeast Ohio. That is my day job. And then on the side, I run a website called Control Alt Achieve, where I share out all of my ed tech resources. You can connect with, with me in a bunch of ways. If you scroll on down just a little bit on that document, you'll see a section there with loads of links to connect with me, whether it's my blog or email, social media, YouTube. Uh, I've got a weekly email newsletter. There's an email discussion group. Lots and lots of different ways to connect. Whatever works best for you, uh, please do connect with me through that. Also, I've got some links here for uh, upcoming live streams. We typically typically do these each Monday night. So the next one will be next Monday, April 17th. I've already got the links in there. If it helps you to plan ahead of time, do note there is a calendar link for all of my live streams. If you do add that, you can then just always take a look at your Google calendar and see any upcoming uh, events. And then I also do list them out individually here as well. And of course, I want to hear from you guys. So during the session tonight, please uh, provide feedback. Uh, you can do that in a number of ways. You can uh, chat uh, through whichever live streaming service you're using. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn, go ahead and throw some comments there in the chat. I've got that open on another screen. So I'll do my best to keep an eye and see if you've got any questions or comments or feedback throughout the session here tonight. Um, also, you are certainly allowed to comment in this document. I do have commenting turned on, and there's even a Google form that you can get submit feedback through. So whatever works for you, please feel free to take advantage of that, because I would love to hear from you throughout the session as well. Excellent. Well, let's again remind everybody uh, where we can all get to the resources for tonight. That is bit.ly slash CAA dash live. All right. Well, hey, let's get on into it. So what we're going to do is we'll scroll on down to our second page here. And this is where we're going to find our resources for tonight. Now, as normal, each week I try to pull together some things I've come across on the internet recently and share those and then share anything from my blog as well. So we're going to start off with some things from around the web. I picked out three things that we're going to take a look at here tonight. The first one we're going to dive into is Fig Jam. So let's talk a little bit about Fig Jam and then we'll dive on in and take it for a spin. So Fig Jam is a totally free for schools uh, online diagramming tool from Figma. That's the, the company that has uh, the larger Figma design uh, tool that uh, Fig Jam is sort of a spinoff from that. Uh, it is wonderful for brainstorming ideas for projects and assignments. You can use sticky notes and shapes and freehand drawing. You can organize your thoughts and research. You can use uh, diagrams, mind maps. You can collaborate with other people. So teachers, classmates can collaborate together in real time, leaving feedback and comments. It's great for group projects, presentations, all sorts of uses. All right. So that is what Fig Jam's all about. Now, I've thrown in a couple of links here to kind of get us going. The first one is just a link out to the Fig Jam uh, website. So you can learn more about it here. This gives you some more details on the tool itself. Um, having said that, I've also thrown in a few other links here. And one is uh, where you can go to create an account, a little help guide on that, and also verifying your education status. Because remember, I said this is a free tool if you are 
a teacher or a student. So if we come here uh, to create an account, this is a simple article that will walk you through all the basics of setting up an account with uh, Figma. And then the other one talks about how to verify your education status. So that way you can uh, qualify for the free use of Fig Jam as well. So all that information is there to get you going. Now, what I've done to try to make things a little bit easier tonight is I went ahead and put together a very quick demo here. Um, I did not create this. This is one that was part of their community resources. That's something I love about Figma. Uh, they have such an active community, creating lots of great resources. So I went ahead and I put, I made a copy of a uh, of a fig jam that somebody had uh, had created, a sort of an introduction to what this tool is all about. Now, if anybody wants to jump in with me, you are welcome to. You do not have to. Please do not feel any obligation to. Uh, but there is a link here uh, that if you do want to uh, jump on in, you can uh, follow that link to join me inside of this fig jam. Now, there's a lot of whiteboard tools out there. A lot of these sort of collaborative whiteboard diagramming tools. Um, but FidJam is definitely one that I would absolutely encourage you to take a look at. I'll try to show you some of the things it does that are different than, let's say, like Jamboard or some of the other ones that are out there. And you can think every one of these has its place. It's just a matter of finding the tool that's right for what it is you're trying to accomplish with your, with your students. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start navigating around here real quick. Um, and what you, one thing you'll notice real quick is that it's really kind of an infinite canvas. So it's not, um, you don't have just a, a set space to work in. You're allowed to um, go as far out as you need to. And of course, you can zoom in and zoom out as needed as well. Now, I am not going to cover everything in this demo. Uh, this would be great if you're doing a full workshop and you wanted to introduce people to all the different tools. I'm just going to run you through a couple of the basics here so you can just see some of the main things with it. Uh, we've already talked about some of the first basic things about how it is free for students and educators. And um, again, I put the links in there for you to sign up and verify your education status as well in our document here. Um, nevertheless, uh, they do walk you through all that and uh, help kind of get you started into that. Now, again, I'm just going to show you a couple of the quick tools here. Um, so for example, um, some here's a quick list of some of the tools that we can take advantage of. Uh, one is the stamps feature. Um, there's a little stamps button down here and you can click on that to get to it. There's also keyboard shortcuts for things. Think E is the shortcut in this case. And I can either do stamps or I can do emojis here. So that's one of the quick things to show right away. Um, then there's uh, also what's called cursor chat. So if I press the uh, forward slash, I'm able to actually type with my cursor, where my cursor's at. So rather than typing on here, I can quickly just uh, type a message and I can communicate with people right off of my cursor. Uh, there's also a high five option. Don't have anybody here to high five, <laughs> but if I did, if you hold down the H, you get a big hand and you can high five people. <laughs> That's kind of cute. And then also they mentioned like setting up a timer. Uh, there is a timer feature up here. If we wanted to uh, set a timer and get that started, even pick some background music to play while we're going. Uh, that's a nice feature that's built right into it. All right. Uh, and again, they're telling you here about holding down the space bar to pan around. And then um, I'm using my control key with my uh, with my uh, mouse with my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. But you can find the method that works best for you. All right. So for example, we could have students using things like the stamp to uh, drop themselves onto a particular uh, spot on here and say, okay, I want to uh, to to indicate you know where I would fall on this particular uh, this particular continuum. So I could click on my stamp button here and um, I could go with my face stamp if I wanted, for example, and I could say, okay, how much do you use Figma? And I could say, oh, I, I use it quite a bit here. And I could, you know, boop, stamp myself right on there. Uh, are you new to it? Have you been using it a lot? Yeah, I use it quite a bit, you know, and you could just drop a quick stamp right on there uh, as well. As we keep on moving, uh, you could show how we could do the same thing. We could stamp whether, have you ever used Figma before or are you new to it? And then we could even go and we can, we're not going to go through all of this. I'm just going to show you some of the basics. Like over here, uh, we could customize some, some trading cards with our name. So we could come in and we could uh, zoom in on any one of these 
and then I could give a double click on here and I could put my name in. And so I could claim this one as mine. And of course I could start filling everything out, including putting my picture in and so forth. All right, let's keep on just moving around though, because I just want to show you some other things that they've laid out here as far as some basic functions and features. They do have sticky notes. That is a pretty common feature with a lot of these interactive tools. Um, and so we do have a, a little sticky note uh, option here, which you'll see them down here. They look kind of like post-it notes. Uh, and there's a couple of different colors that you can choose from. So you can either use the ones that are already here, or I could come in and say, oh, I want to add a green, you know, post-it note. Whoop, I'll choose green there. There we go. And now I could come up here and I could drag and drop a green post-it note on there. And of course I can zoom in and add my text. Hello, everyone. There we go. Uh, and there's a lot of adjustments we can make. You know, we can add hyperlinks and we can, you know, make all sorts of changes to these as well. So real quick, easy way to drop in some sticky notes there. Well, let's keep on moving. Uh, what else can we do here? Oh, shapes, of course. Yes, we can add lots and lots of shapes as well. Uh, there's a shapes button down here where we've got several shapes that we can choose from and different colors as well. So I could come in and grab one of these shapes and boop, drop a shape in. After I drop that shape in, if I wanted to, I can now build off of it by just clicking those little arrows that pop off to the side of it if I wanted to continue to build off of it. Or I could use my connector button here if I wanted to connect from one shape to another as well. So a really nice uh, tool there for adding and uh, uh, working with shapes as well. Excellent. Uh, let's see, anything else on this side over here? Oh, yes, they talk about the libraries that are built into FigJam. You can get to that through the More button here at the bottom. There's lots of stuff in here. Uh, but uh, like, for example, if we look through like the uh, sticker collections, there's libraries of sticker collections that you can add in. So the students can just drag and drop these images around uh, to access and use those. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, we've got the draw. Yep, yep, they talk about the drawing tool as well. So there is a pin over here that I can do either a pin or a highlighter. Um, there's also, um, oh, what's the name? I always forget what they call this. It's that kind of tape that uh, here I'll, I'll click on it where you can, you know, have a, a pattern on it. I'm forgetting the name of it right now, uh, but you can do these, this, this real cool tape that has patterns on it as well there with lots of different cool designs. If you want to add some really awesome designs, you can upload your own designs uh, for it there. Uh, but anyway, we could come into here and we, we can draw uh, very quick and easy on there as well. All right, excellent. Let's see, do we have any more things on this end before we move on? Oh yeah, they talk about templates. Oh my gosh, yes, so many templates built into this. If we head to the more button, there's a templates section where there are just loads and loads and loads of templates you can pull from and drop these pre-made templates right in. So a lot of these examples you're seeing over here were pulled from the template gallery. And so, and you can go to the community and find even more. So lots of pre-made templates that can be pulled hold in here as well. And then I think the last row here is showing off just a couple more little things. It talks about plugins and widgets. So plugins allow you to integrate with third-party tools. So if I come down to the more button and go to plugins, you'll see there's all sorts of plugins that we can work with. As a quick example, I had used Unsplash recently just to test it out. That's the wonderful uh, free public domain image website. Well, instead of having to go out to Unsplash and come back to find an image, I can just run it as a plugin right here inside of FigJam. And then I have access to Unsplash and I can search through Unsplash to find, you know, maybe I'm looking for a good picture of a dog. And so I can search through Unsplash to find that, click on that image and then add that right on in. And so uh, there's a lot of plugins which make it really nice to be able to integrate third-party tools right into with what you're doing. And then there's widgets. Now, what's a widget? A widget's going to be more of an interactive tool. And so there's all kinds of widgets. If you go to the widget section, you'll see they've got dice and a photo booth and pie charts and uh, coin flippers and polls and just all sorts of interactives. So I think a good example of this would be the one they put in here. They put in the, uh, this is the uh, the photo booth uh, widget. So basically what you can do is you can come here and click on the photo booth and hey, there I am. <laughs> It'll go and take a picture of me. So we'll do that. So we'll say, howdy, everybody. 
There we go. It just took a picture and burp. There it is. <laughs> and it just and it just spit that picture out. That's fantastic. Excellent. And now I can move that picture around and do whatever I might need to do with <laughs> that there. So now I know I've I've barely scratched the surface of everything you can do with fig jam, but I hope even just doing that little amount there is showing you just the vast amount of tools that they have here from the drawing tools to the shapes, to the, to the, to the post-its, to the, uh, the stamps and the emojis, uh, all of the different the stickers and templates and widgets and plugins and so, so, so much more. And again, just scratching the surface of some of the things we can do there. Oh, I do see Jennifer Kronk has joined me. Hey, Jen, hopefully you're having a good, a good day there. Yeah, feel free to click on the little red button there on the photo booth if you want to take a picture there <laughs> as well. And you can add yourself to our selfie wall. <laughs> that is fantastic. Good to see you here tonight, Jen. So, Anyway, um, that is a very quick overview of uh, Fig Jam and how that tool works. There's a, an awful lot more that you can get into, but I hope that gives you a little introduction to it so you have at least a, a, a starting point to begin from. Um, and as I mentioned, there's a lot of uh, great resources that they have available. Their community is, is a very active community sharing lots of great stuff. So if you do follow the link out, to the Fig Jam uh, uh, website, uh, you can connect uh, to a lot more resources there as well. But again, to get started, definitely you'll want to create an account and then verify that you're an educator and you will be good to go. All right. Well, again, if anybody has any questions or comments or thoughts on anything related to Fig Jam, please feel free to drop that into the chat. Seeing a bunch of people just saying hello. Uh, hi, Peggy. Hi, Eileen. So good to see you guys here tonight as well. All right. Excellent. Well, there you go. That's a quick, uh, quick update to a quick overview of Fig Jam. And again, if you do have any questions, oh, looks like we did get, we ended up getting, uh, yep, there we go, Jen. Hey, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Jen has joined our selfie wall. So, so, so great to have you with me, with us here tonight, Jen. Thanks so much. All right. Good stuff. All right. Well, let's go ahead and we will move on to our next tool. But again, if you have questions on Fig Jam, please feel free to throw those in the chat. If I can answer them, I will be happy to do so. All right. Well, let's move on to our next tool for this evening, which is going to be Inno Reader. So let's talk a little bit about Inno Reader. So this is a powerful content reading tool that basically helps you to stay informed and organized. So basically what you can do with Inno Reader is you can subscribe to all of your favorite websites and blogs and newsletters and more. And then what Inno Reader does is it pulls all of those together into one place for you. And the free version allows you to have up to 150 subscriptions. So that's an awful lot of websites and blogs and newsletters that you can pull together for free all in one place. Now, of course, the paid version, you can do, uh, I think, an unlimited amount of feeds, but uh, the free version is up to 150. Uh, it also lets you save articles for later. So if you want to make sure you get back around to an article that you don't have time with, and there's search features, uh, so you can always find what you're looking for. So that's the quick overview of what Inno Reader is all about. Uh, now, let me fill in a couple of the details here. So you probably, you probably heard me talk about these kind of tools before, and you probably have heard me mention how I have been using for many years a tool called Feedly. Now, again, love Feedly. Fantastic, great tool. Love it, love it, love it. Um, but uh, just a couple of weeks ago, a week or two ago, Ryan Collins uh, had suggested Inno Reader. And he said uh, what he liked about it was it had a, a larger amount of subscriptions you could do for free. So Feedly caps out at 100 subscriptions. Inno Reader is at 150. So, hey, that's fantastic. I thought, you know what, I'll take it for a spin and see how it works. I got to tell you guys, I'm really pleased with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my Inno Reader uh, tab over. Uh, it's on a different account. This is my trainer account and my Inno Reader tab is on my personal account. So I'm going to pull it on over here so we can take a look at it. So when I go to Inno Reader, this is what I see. This is, this is what welcomes me. And what you're going to notice is down the left-hand side, 
these are my different categories. Now, if you've ever seen me show Feedly, these are the exact same categories. I simply exported them from Feedly and imported them right into InnoReader very painlessly. Now, what you'll notice is down the left, I can click on these different categories. Like I may say, okay, what's new with Google? So I can click on the Google category. And what it's going to do is it's pulling the headlines from any of the uh, new articles on any website that I have added to my Google list. So you'll notice I have, uh, looks like about 21 feeds. So these are uh, they're blogs. They're uh, basically websites either from Google or about Google that over the years I have curated together. So whether it's nine to five Google or whether it's Chrome unboxed or whether it's, you know, you know, the, the websites from Google themselves, you know, so the, the Google apps update website or the Google cloud blog, you know, all of these different um, sites, I have added them, you know, into this uh RSS aggregator tool. And now instead of having to go to 21 different websites to learn about Google things, I just come to one place and boop, there they are. So <laughs> these are these are all of the articles from that have come in the, I think the last day. I try to keep up on this every couple of days. I make sure I jump in here. So I can now come in and I can start reading these. Now, one thing I really like about this is the split screen approach where I can come here and say, okay, let's just give a click on the article title. And then I can read the article over here on the side. It pulls it in for me. So this is so nice. And so what I end up doing is I'll just take a little bit of time each day and I'll just go click, 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 click through. And I'll be like, okay, that looks cool. Let's take a look at this. Nah, some of these maybe don't apply to me. So I just keep on moving, but I can move so quickly. I can just start heading right down here and I can find, you know, uh, if it's something that interests me and I want to learn more about it. In this case, it didn't load the full article, which is fine. Sometimes it only grabs the first part if that's the way that site is set up. But if I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. I want to learn more. I can just click on the article itself and pop it open. And now I can read the rest of the article over there. Sometimes it'll pull the full article in. Mm -hmm. Again, sometimes it's just going to pull in part of it. Now, if I decide that, you know, I, 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 I this is good content, you know, that's when then I add it to my links of the week, or I add it to my GEG Ohio meeting, or I tweet about it or something like that. But this is one of the ways I pull in new information. So I've got five categories. I've got a category with Google resources. I've got one called EdTech. This has 89 different blogs from all kinds of amazing people out there. So, you know, you know, just about anybody you can imagine, whether it's Jen Giffen or Meredith Akers or Jeremy Baininger or Jake Miller, all of these amazing people. Basically, I've added all of their blogs in here. So again, I don't have to visit every one of their blogs. I just come here and say, hey, look, there's 12 new things people have shared out. And boom, 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 boom. I can just start clicking down and reading all of their most recent articles. Articles. So for example, I did an ed tech spotlight on Scribble Diffusion. And so I can click and yep, there's there's my blog post <laughs> that I did on Scribble Diffusion. Uh, but um, uh, more than anything, I do that just to check to <laughs> make sure everything is still working there. Uh, it's all the other ones that I'm trying to read. Then I've got one called EdTech 2. This one only has a few um, in here, but it's ones that produce a lot of content. So it's like Larry Ferlazzo mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's, 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 a uh, it's Richard Byrne, you know, they make so much content that I broke them out into their own category because otherwise they were just overwhelming <laughs> the ed tech category. So I called them ed tech too. <laughs> so they've got their own category. Then I've got an education category that has some more general ed uh, ed re resources, not specifically technology, but education. And then I have a subjects one as well that has some math and some social studies and some other subject related things. And so I'm loving this. Uh, I again, love Feedly. I think it's fantastic. But the fact that you get 50 more subscriptions for free. So I think I only have like a hundred and I don't know how many I'm up to. I'm up to about a hundred and 128. So I have 128. So I'm, st I'm within the free range, which that's awesome that I wouldn't even have to pay for this and still be able to access all of these in one place. Now, if you like that, if you're like, that's cool. I would encourage you to try this out. Um, again, very simple, very easy to do. Just head on over to um, InnoReader and you can sign up for a free account. And then if you want a starting place, I went ahead and I put in all of my feeds, those five different categories I just showed you. If you're like, oh, 
I want to, I want access to those 89 ed tech feeds that you had there. These are the uh, exports from those different categories. And so what you could do is you could say, come here and click on the ed tech one in this format, it's called OPML. Um, and that is the format that contains all of the feeds. So you could download this, you could come here and download that. And then after you download it, then you would be able to go to Inno Reader and you could import it. You could, you know, add that. You could import that as one of your feeds. Um, and so, if we come here, um, we can do an import. Oh, I'd have to find it where it's at again. I apologize. I did it just the other day, and now I'm drawing a blank as to where I did the import. It may have been under the feed here. Oh, I'd have to check and see again. At, at the moment, I do not recall, but I have to look again. But yes, you can you can you can import uh, from the OPML file and you would not have to recreate these. You could have, you know, your own uh, copies of all of the ones that I follow there. So apologies that I'm not seeing the button right away. <laughs> like I said, I, I did it the other day. I exported them from Feedly and imported them into here. So if that helps, then good stuff. Uh, it's a great way. What I just like about it is yeah, we just, there's just not enough time. And whenever I come across somebody, I'm like, oh, this person is putting out great content. I just want to drop them into something where I can follow them. And this is a great way to do that. I, if somebody has a blog, boom, I'm going to drop it right into there. And now I'd never have to worry about missing something that they're creating again. It all comes to one place. Now, that may not work for you. You may have other ways that you prefer to get information, but it works really well for me. And if it is something helpful to you, uh, I would encourage you to explore that. Awesome. All right. Again, seeing a lot of great comments there. People saying, you know, can't wait to try it. Um, uh, Jen Kronk saying it's like an old school aggregator. Yep. It's like it's an RSS aggregator, just like back in the Google News Reader days. You know, we used to have the the, the Google Reader tool that that went away. So, uh, um, so yeah, absolutely. Very, very much like that. Good stuff. All right. Well, we've got one more around the web to take a look at here tonight before we move on. Um, so the last around the web tool is uh, po from Poe. Uh, it's a new feature they've added, which is their create a bot feature. So let's talk a little bit about this. So first of all, Poe is not a new thing. I think I've even mentioned it probably in one of these uh, sessions that we've had. Um, Poe is actually from Quora. I don't know if you remember them, Q-U-O-R-A. You know, Quora is one of those websites where you can go and ask questions and get community feedback on questions. Well, Quora got into the AI uh, arms race, shall we say, and they started creating a bunch of uh, AI chatbots as well, uh, such, you know, to come alongside things like ChatGPT and Google Bard. Um, and so I probably have mentioned them before. Poe is their site, uh, poe.com. Poe is their site that where you can go to get to all these things. I'll just pull up Poe real quick here so you can see that. Poe.com. Whoops, there we go. So here's Poe.com. Um, and so uh, this is where I can get to their uh, their chatbots that they have created. Well, they've done something uh, new recently, and that is they've added a feature to create your own chatbot. So basically what you do is you head over to Poe and, of course, you know, sign in with an account. It's, it's free. Um, then you'll choose a base AI chatbot to build off of. You can either build off of ChatGPT or one of Quora's called Claude. And then after you have your base that you're going to build off of, you then create a text prompt that will serve as that bot's personality or purpose or identity. Basically, you get to pre-customize what this bot's going to be. After you've done that, you can then just share that link out to anybody and they can chat with your pre-configured AI bot. And I think this could be really neat for teachers and students because rather than needing to go and set up the prompt every time, you could say, here is a pre-configured AI chat bot that, will, that is already designed to do X, Y, Z. So, so what are those X, Y, Z kind of things? Well, as some examples, if you head to the blog post that they had 
that I uh, linked in here for you. Uh, they've put in several of the ones that they had created just to kind of show this off. So again, the link here uh, next to Poe Create a Bot, this resource link takes you to their blog post. And you'll see they did one that talks like a pirate. <laughs> they did one that explains how to say things in Japanese, one that translate messages into emojis, one that uh, that, that that insults you, <laughs> a roast master one. And then there's a chef bot, one that will, if you give it ingredients, it'll suggest a recipe. So if I were to go to the pirate bot, for example, I could now start talking to it. I could be like, you know, how are you today? And if I could spell, that would probably help there. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to be getting back a uh, conversation specifically in pirate talk there. Um, another one was that roast master one. If you if you come there, I said hello to it earlier. And of course, it uh, it's <laughs> it started insulting me right away. Um, <laughs> do you have any suggestions for a good book to read? Sure. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you're capable of reading. Uh, but now it's going to go on <laughs> and give me some suggestions there. Now. Some of these are just fun, you know, I mean, that that's kind of cute the way that they've, you know, uh, uh, the way they're showing, setting those up. But I was thinking educationally, what could you do with it? And I thought, well, the idea would be you could, you know, head over here to Poe. You could click on the uh, option to, um, am I not logged in? Hold on, make sure I'm, oh, there it is down there. Yep. Go down to the create a bot section. So there's a create a bot section down here. And when you click on create a bot, um, you could say, okay, I want to have a bot that is going to be a math tutor, or I want a bot that's going to be a science expert, or I want a bot that's going to uh, be a famous historical person, or whatever the case might be. You can do that. You can come in here and you can set up a prompt and you can say, you know, you are to act a certain way. You are to, you know, be a certain thing. So what I did for mine, just to have a little bit of fun, um, I set one up to be uh, like a, a 20 question sort of yes, no question thing where you're trying to guess what animal the bot is. Uh, and so what I ended up doing was I put in something like this. You're all copy and paste it over so you can see what I put in. When I created mine, I said, you are, and then I gave it an animal. I said, you are, and I told it what the animal is. And I said, you can only answer questions that have a yes, no answer. If the user asks you a question that cannot be answered with yes or no, respond with sorry, but I can only respond to yes, no questions. If the user guesses what animal you are, then respond with yes, you guessed what I am. And so basically I created an animal chatbot. And so that's the one that I linked in here. Um, so if you uh, click on my example, the 20 questions animal 01 that was the one that i created there um if if we uh copy that link and again i'll put it into a different account because uh i'm actually the creator of it on that account so i'll pull it over and i won't give away what the animal is i'll let you try it if you want to try it out but basically if i give anybody that link they can click the link come here and it'll be like hey i'm an animal can you guess what i am and so now i'd have to start saying huh do you live on the land? And it's going to start answering me, you know, um, you know, do you live in the air? You know, no. <laughs> and I guess we're trying to narrow that down, you know, uh, do you live in the water? And uh, hopefully that is going to be accurate. I'm running out of places for it to live. Yes, it does live in the water. Now, again, we'll start now narrowing in. And if I ask it something that's not, like if I said something like, you know, what color are you? It should not answer that. Sorry, but I can only respond to yes, no questions. And so, you know, again, I won't give away what this particular animal is if you want to try it out, um, but there you go. So now you could have this pre-configured chat bot to behave a certain way, to have a certain personality. And with a link, anybody could come there and start having a conversation with that. So, um, so that is the uh, new create a bot feature from Poe. Um, and I'm seeing some, uh, again, some, some good, uh, some good uh, comments on that. Kristen is, is saying that looks so fun. I'm thinking of some ideas right now for science. Uh, let me see. Uh, she said, I want a student to make a claim and the bot and the bot asks for detailed evidence and continue to ask the student to expand their evidence and reasoning. Love it. So yeah, please. And if you do, uh, 
do that. If you do create one, uh, please feel free to share the link. I would love to test out uh, your uh, um, your pre-created AI chat bots. And this is, again, this is totally free, no cost at all uh, for creating those. Good stuff. Ah, and I see Jennifer said she did find the uh, link to uh, to import uh, the feed <laughs> for the OPML uh, in um, in Inno Reader. So that's good. I'm, I'm glad. Again, I apologize. I was not able to find it real quick when I was looking at it there. All right. Good stuff. Well, folks, that brings us to our final resource for the week, um, which is uh, from my blog. And um, I recently did a blog post on a Google Bard overview for educators. Now, I'm not gonna run through all of the details uh, here. You are certainly encouraged to check out the blog post. There's a 10 minute video where I go through all of the basics of using Google Bard. There's also a blog post that accompanies this where I walk you step by step through uh, you know, accessing Bard and using Bard and examples of what we can do with it. So definitely check out that blog post. I'm going to go ahead, though, and just very quickly bring Bard over and just show you some of the real quick basics in case you haven't had a chance to play around with it. And again, we will not go into uh, as much detail as I do in the blog post there, but at least just a little bit to show you the basics. So let's say um, you haven't seen Bard before. Here's a quick overview of it. So much like ChatGPT, this is a large language model AI uh, chatbot. This one's from Google. And when you uh, head over to Bard, and uh, at the moment, I think it is still um, uh, something you have to apply for, like you have to jump on jump on the uh, wait list uh, for that. Um, so it still is sort of in a beta uh, a beta mode. But again, you can go and you can add your name to the wait list. I think it only took me like a, a day or two to get approved once I had put my email in on the wait list. Um, and so from here, you're going to have the spot to enter your prompt. I think the example I did in my blog post was a pretty simple one. We'll we'll just use this same one. I said something like explain what a metaphor is and give some examples. And so you can, just like ChatGPT, you can pretty much ask Bard anything uh, that you might need. Um, a little bit of a difference uh, on ChatGPT, you might be used to it typing out as it goes. With Google Bard, instead, it does wait until it has the response and then boom, gives you the whole response there all at once. I'll zoom in just a bit so you can see that a little bit better. Now, what makes this different from something like ChatGPT? Certainly, the similarities are stronger than the differences. They're very, very similar tools. A couple things that make it different. One is that it does more than one draft at a time. Anytime you ask it a question, you can click on view other drafts and it may give you two or three versions of the response. Um, typically three versions, some, sometimes two versions like in this example here. And so if the first one that you get here isn't quite the way you were hoping the answer would be worded or you wanted to have at least a different approach to it, you can pop over to the other drafts and see. And in this one, they're doing a whole lot more uh, examples uh, than in the first one. But it's going to, again, it's going to be up to you as to which one you, know, you prefer there. Below there, you can thumbs up or thumbs down it. You can get a new response. You can Google it if you want to jump out to a Google search and uh, try to learn more about it straight from Google. Um, and of course, you can also come up and edit your original request if you want to reword it. And then of course, you can just continue on the conversation. I think after I had done uh, the first one, I, I asked it something like, uh, how are similes different? And because it already knew what we were talking about, you don't have to kind of, you know, start from scratch. It's building on that conversation. And so now it's going to tell us how metaphors and similes are different from each other. And again, we can look through the different drafts there on that. Um, so very, again, very similar probably to what you're used to using in a tool like ChatGPT. The differences being um, the different drafts that you get. I think, I think that's nice. Uh, the ability to quickly Google something if you want to get a, a Google search um, as well, in, in addition to what you got from the chatbot. Um, one of the definite limits of this 
is it doesn't have like chat GPT has a list of every conversation you've had down the side. It has an activity tab, but it just lists like the conversations you've had. It doesn't have a full list of what, what the responses were. So basically it just says, hey, you know, it looks like you have asked this question today at this time. And that's it. So I'm hoping they'll add that feature where you can, you know, resume a conversation. Like with ChatGPT, I can just click on one of the previous ones and pick up that conversation where I left it off. That would be that would be really nice. Now, having said that, another thing that I, I do want to mention for sure is that Bard is still developing. You know, this is, uh, it even says Bard experiment up in the top corner there. Um, when it first came out a few weeks ago, I, I found a lot of errors, a lot of inaccuracies. It has improved massively in just the last few weeks. I understand they're rolling out more and more powerful versions of it each week as they are testing it and um, and you know rolling out more powerful uh, database versions of it. And so where it's at right now, um, it has come leaps and bounds <laughs> over where it started from. And I would say right now, if I were to compare it to ChatGPT, I would say it's, I would rank it above ChatGPT 3.5, but not necessarily better than four. I think ChatGPT 4 is still my go-to for some of my most, you know, sophisticated uh, conversations, but it's, it's really getting right up there with it. So I'm very encouraged by that. Now, in addition to the blog post that I did on ChatGPT and, excuse me, and the video, that I have here that you can uh, uh, watch. I also have been putting together a overall general document about AI tools and education. And so I did as a bonus, just link that in as well. That can always be found at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash AI. And so that includes information about things like chat GPT, but it's much broader than that. So if you head to that document, you're going to see lots of content here from an overview of AI to uh, specific AI tools for speech and music and images and for language, and then lots of examples of how to use AI in education. So I cover, you know, using AI for reading and writing and conversation and feedback and, you know, tasks and on and on. For each one of these, I try to put in an example and you can click on any of these examples and it will open up a Google document where I show the actual conversations I've had with Bard and ChatGPT as I illustrate how AI can be used for all of these different purposes here. Then I've got a section in here on creating useful prompts and a section at the end talking about addressing potential misuses of AI. And so I run through a lot of things that schools should be considering and thinking about when it comes to addressing the potential misuse of AI in education. Now, this document, I guarantee you, is a work in progress. It's going to, this one will keep on developing over time. Uh, but um, uh, I wanted to, you know, get that out there and say, please feel free to take advantage of some of the resources in there as well. All right. Well, folks, those are the resources for this week. Um, take a moment. If you've got any questions, comments, throw those into the chat. I'll take a quick look over there and see if there's anything uh, that we still need to address from um, our chat tonight. Seeing a lot of good comments, uh, people excited about using these tools. And thanks, Peggy. I'm so glad that is a uh, helpful resource, helpful compilation of resources there. All right. Well, I think that does bring us to the end then. So uh, once again, thank you guys so much for being here tonight. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn along with me. As always, you can get to these resources at any point at bit.ly slash CAA dash live. Uh, if you do use these, I'd love to hear how they go. So contact me. Remember, my contact information is at the top of that document there. I'd love to hear from you as to how you use these tools. And I want to hear what else I should add because every week I'm looking for new things. So please continue to send your suggestions and ideas my way. I'm so excited to learn from you guys. Uh, other than that, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. And I will see you guys next Monday for our next Control Alt Achieve Live. Take care, everybody. <laughs>